So as you noticed, and watch really carefully when I do the bottom half of the leaf too, because that's just the top half of the leaf. Um, I followed that line. Okay, so now we're ready to put this all together and start painting some bomb, you know what, leaves or stems, whatever, whatever they're called, sprigs, I don't know. All right, I'm actually going to wash my brush off because I have green. I prefer to start with stems because then I know where my leaves are going. So I'm gonna wash this off. Brown, uh, or the brown I'm working with is a warm color, so I have my cups of water separated. This is my warm cup of water, so if I have like reds, oranges, pinks, etc., more warm colors, I'll wash them off in here. My greens, etc., will be washed off in here, so I don't mix the two together and just have murky, gross, muddy water, okay? So I'm gonna load up with my um, warm water for my stems, and like I said earlier, my stem color is burnt umber with a touch of Mars block, so it's not too milk chocolatey. Um, yeah, that's all. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is what I showed you already. I am going to pivot from my elbow and just give a nice C curve for my stems. I like to give the bottom of the stem just a little bit of thickness and then from there, the rest of the stem is really thin. Like I'm barely touching the paper. And then from here, like I mentioned earlier, I'm just going over the main stem and curving out. I don't want to go too far out with my stem because then my leaf is going to be way out here and it's going to look really bare in there. Some stems can be shorter than others, some longer than others. Maybe give one of these stems a little extension, like so. So now I'm just washing my brown off of my brush, grabbing clean water or green water. And what I like to do with my stems is start dark and work light. It kind of makes the stem look like it's getting further away. Um, I also like to change up the hues a little bit so I don't have the same amount of sap green on my brush for every single leaf. That just makes it look really flat and boring. So for this leaf, maybe it's just sap green by itself, and then this one up here has a little touch of yellow in it or a little touch of blue. It just adds some variety and adds some movement, movement to the stem. Okay, so for my first leaf, because I like to start with a more dark value and then work towards a lighter value, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the amount of pigment on my brush is thicker than the amount of water. So you just grab a little bit more paint on your brush and the color is going to be darker. I've also grabbed both green and a touch of blue. And as you can see by my palette, I am super type B. So I don't worry about cross contamination or anything like that because if you just add water to the actual color that you added green on top of the blue or whatever it might be and then pick it up with a paper towel it comes right off so no worries there but if you're type a then just bring it into a separate mixing well and you'll be clean and fine fine so what i'm going to do i have a little bit of blue with my sap green on my brush and whatever direction the stem is curving that's the direction my leaf is going to point. So if rotating the paper helps you out a little bit, then go ahead and do that. So for example, this stem right here is pointing this direction. I don't want a leaf that's pointing down at me. That's gonna look like somebody went up, went up to it and broke off the leaf. So we want it to grow or extend out of the stem. So again, make sure, like I said, that the handle of your brush is pointing in line with the direction the leaf is going to point. So for example, this leaf is pointing this way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna point my handle that way. 
I'm gonna start with the top side of the leaf. So I'm at a 50 degree angle. I'm going to gradually apply pressure and gradually release that pressure until I get a really thin tip. And you can see that I followed a straight line because of that nice straight edge right there that I'm gonna combine with the bottom side of the leaf. So start at the same spot and end at the same spot, like so. Again, if I had the same hue and value of leaf for all of the leaves on this stem, it would look really flat. Just a couple tweaks here and there make all the difference. So what I'm gonna do for my next leaf is just roll around on my yellow to make it a slight shift in hue for a more yellow green. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of water because I have a lot of paint on my brush, just a touch of water. And then I'm gonna grab some yellow paint, just a touch. I don't want it to be too yellow green next to that, like darker blue green. And then from here, I'm at this stem here, so we're pointing that direction. I usually like to pull the leaf towards me. It feels more natural, but just to show you, you can paint this way. It just feels more natural for me to pull. So if you want to, you can rotate your paper. But I'm gonna start over here on the top side of this leaf here, pressure release and if you want to i like sometimes to have this little gap towards the bottom of the leaf kind of looks like a little highlight or a vein so as you can see this is a more blue green or a hunter green and this is a yellow green very slight change in hue nothing major so it doesn't look too odd next to each other and now uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take what's on my brush, which is that yellow green, and I'm just gonna make it a lighter value. So all I'm gonna do is gonna rinse off a little bit of that pigment in my water so I can make it lighter. So all I'm doing to make this a lighter color is I'm literally just flicking my brush in my water a couple of times, because that's releasing some of that pigment. And then always swipe that excess water off on the edge of your jar and we're ready to paint. This is gonna be a slightly lighter in value yellow green color. I don't wanna put it right next to that yellow green leaf that I just painted because I want to kind of stagger the, the hues and the values a bit. So we, our next stem is gonna be on this side over here. And we have a lighter yellow green. And if you overlap a leaf before, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what would happen in nature. Things are crisscrossing and folding over each other, and that is perfectly fine. Um, so go for it. Just try it out. And if you don't like how it turns out, it's just paper. Start over. So I'm just lightening my brush even a bit more with the same hue. I haven't gone back to my palette to grab more paper. I've just gone to my water to lighten the color. And I'm going to go to this leaf or this stem over here. And that's a pretty light color, so I'm just gonna add a bit more. I just went to my sap green, and I'm adding a touch more to that leaf. And maybe we have that same hue and value for this leaf over here. And then I'm just gonna grab a little bit more yellow for this one. And we're on our last leaf. So I'm grabbing a little bit more water. And for me, I don't like seeing this hard stem line in the middle of this leaf, so I'm just gonna make the base of that leaf a little bit of a darker green. So I'm grabbing some sap green and just kind of covering that up. I might do that here too. So there you have it. Um, if you look at your, your stem after you've painted it and you see big old gaps in your stem where leaves aren't too close together or it just kind of feels awkward, then all you have to do is go back and add a couple stems here and there. I wouldn't add anything in between here. 
I might add something down here, but I really like how that turned out. And as you can see, it creates a lot of movement if you don't just have the same color and the same lightness or darkness of that color. So we have different darkness and value. So we have a really dark leaf here and a couple light ones and some mid-tone ones over, in, over here. And then we also have some yellow green balanced with some blue green. So it creates a lot of movement, which you would see in nature because light hits different different angles, different areas of leaves and casts a different type of light, a different type of color, a different type of color shadow, etc. So play with it. Try not to put like a really dark blue green right next to a chartreuse bright yellow green because that feels really unnatural. But this to me creates a lot of great movement and color on the page for this stem. So now on our next stem, what we're going to do is paint some rosemary. Um, so we got the hard part out of the way. We're now just going to use our size six brush and basically create like a thicker straight line. So we've gone through compound strokes. Now we're gonna go through a bit of a simpler stroke. So the key to this particular plant subject or herb or whatever, sprig, uh, is to make sure that you mix up the values and the hues so that it doesn't just look like a dark green all up the stem and that looks super boring. And we're also gonna show how interacting um, leaf parts. I don't know if that's what you call the green parts on rosemary. Sorry, plant snobs. Um, but <laughs> the uh, interaction with the actual green parts or leaves, whatever, of rosemary and how they can interact with each other. And you can just show simple curves and folds um, overlapping that makes it look really dense and full and something you would, something you would see in nature. And not just these all up this brown stem or line, okay? So what I'm gonna do is for my rosemary color, I already have my stem down. For my rosemary color, I'm gonna mix up a couple different types of green in my mixing wells. And if you've seen my palette and you're type A, then you're probably dying inside <laughs> looking at it. So I, I apologize, but this is just how I work. And as Bob Ross would say, this is where happy accidents would happen. So just let it go, take a deep breath, inhale, exhale, all that garbage, and exhale it out. And you know, it's fine. This color that I have in my mixing well from weeks ago, I can use today. So that's the beauty of watercolor. You can let it dry and then revitalize it or activate it again by adding water to it. So saving dollars there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up like three different shade or values and hues of green, all from the base of my permanent sap green. One color is gonna have a touch of brown in it and a touch of black in it for like a smoky dark green. And then I'm gonna have a more yellow green and a more blue green so that I have some variety in my rosemary and it's not all the same color green, which I see all the time and I'm like, yo, if you just added a different hue Every once in a while, it would just make it spark that much more. So we're gonna grab some water, load up with some permanent sap green. And yes, I am going to load it into this well that already has hues of green in it, and that's fine. I'm gonna get it to the color I want by adding black and green and brown. And whatever's underneath it can help us, or I can just keep adding pigment till I get it to the right color. La 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 It's May, <laughs> by the way. Just singing a Christmas song. All right, so I've got a good amount of sap green in this mixing well. And I want it to be darker for my darkest green. So I'm gonna add a touch of blue because I want it to be more of like a sagey, yeah, sagey green. Maybe not that sagey though. These are the actual internal conversations I have when I'm mixing up colors. <laughs> Maybe not that sap green though, or that whatever I just said. All right, and now I'm making it darker by adding black. Also, if it looks a bit too brown or muted, adding blue just brings it back to life. 
and makes it a bit more green looking. Don't know why, it just does. Excuse me. All right, so with watercolor, the beauty of watercolor, and one of the main things I preach in my classes is you don't have to buy white paint, like acrylic or oil or whatever. You can lighten the hue that you have mixed up or the hue in your palette already dried up or whatever with water. So this hue that I have here, this dark green, I can make a lighter version of it just by going to my water cup, flicking off some of that pigment and going to my paper. Beautiful. It's very time saving and money saving. So I've got my dark green here mixed up, but that's also a world of values of different lightness and darknesses of that hue. So that's great. But I also want a more blue green and a more yellow green. So I'm gonna start with that base that I have that I just mixed up. I'm gonna bring some over here on the other side of my empty dish, and I'm just gonna add a touch of blue to it. And that green also has a lot of different values in it. It just takes some water. And then I'm gonna add some yellow to another part of it. So I have a yellow green, a blue green, and just a dark mid green. I right? So then from there, we can add water or flick off pigment in our water cup. And we have multiple hues and multiple values. And we have a very diverse sprig of rosemary. So I'm gonna start at the base of this stem. I'm gonna wash off my brush, excuse me. I'm gonna wash off my brush first, grab some new water and just this dark, dark color that I mixed up first. And for rosemary, it's very straightforward, very simple. Anybody could do stuff like this. I even incorporate these little sprig leaf type straight line things. <laughs> That's the formal name. <laughs> In my loose floral compositions, like with flowers and a bunch of different types of leaves. And I actually have a video covering this on loose floral, floral composition in a wreath. So you'll even see me incorporate that. Um, it's basically just a straight line and I'm still using that size six brush, which I mentioned earlier, I'm only gonna be using that brush for this entire video. So all I'm doing is I'm staggering my brush around the main stem. I don't give any secondary stems with brown. I'm just plugging in um, the green onto the actual main stem and having fun with it and switching up the hues and the values so that it doesn't look too sta stagnant or flat. So I'm gonna start down here with my dark green and with just a little bit of pressure in my brush at this 50 degree angle, I'm just going to extend a little leaflet right there. So rosemary has this nice like rounded tip so you don't wanna to get too thin at the end and I kind of taper off towards the middle or towards the actual main stem. So I'm gonna maybe plug in another one here and start applying pressure there. So don't get all the way thin with your brush. So don't go how you would do with these leaves over here. Just kind of apply pressure and then lift off. Making sure some are shorter than others, others are curving different directions. They're not all curving inwards or outwards. So I'm staggering this dark green color. I have the ability to make this color lighter by just going to my water and rinsing off some pigment. So I'm gonna do that. And because these leaves are wet, I really like seeing wet and wet action happening. So I'm just going to put that next to it and try to get that to bleed a little bit. And let's cross. Nothing to worry about there.
And then we're gonna grab our blue-green that I mixed up as my second color. Maybe come over here and then cross over the main stem. Not overthinking too much where I'm placing these, but I do want my colors to not be placed all in the same area. So all my yellow greens to be down here and then my blue greens up here because that feels very awkward. So make sure you're mixing it up, mixing up the direction your leaves are pointing, the length of your leaves. So now I'm grabbing my yellow green mixture and gonna add that as my final leaf color. So this particular sprig, though we're calling it rosemary right now, I've also incorporated it in more holiday wreaths, like around Christmas time. It looks really nice as like an evergreen branch with red roses. Um, I'll make sure to do that when it's Christmas time because it's really fun. So we're not overdoing it, not making sure to cover up all of the white space along the main stem and just those little touches of yellow green and lighter values next to darker values, etc. Blue green sticking out makes a huge difference in how the overall appearance of your sprig comes out. If we had just this color and this light or this dark green, it would look really flat and not have any movement. So make sure you're mixing it up and that one little trick makes all the difference. So from here, I'm gonna paint two more stems and show you just a couple more tricks that you can apply with these two techniques that I just showed you with two different types of leaves. So this next leaf is going to be a tulip leaf that folds. So we are basically applying what we've, so we're basically applying the combination of those two leaves that I just showed you, mainly the first leaf that I showed you, um, the compound stroke. But I'm also gonna have you curve your brush more and get more comfortable with just going for it, like you kind of did when you crossed over your rosemary sprigs. Um, a really simple technique that you can use to make it look like a leaf is folded over or bending is to just release pressure and then go back into it. I know that's confusing, so let me show you. So for this next leaf, I'm gonna show you a longer leaf that's folded over. Um, I'm going to start with my permanent sap green and just grab a little bit of yellow. So this is kind of like a tulip leaf. If you think about a tulip, uh, they have a bit longer, they have longer leaves um, and there's a lot of folding and bending going on. So a simple way, a simple way to get a fold in your loose style leaf is just by starting with, we're going to start with a little stem first and then apply pressure and release pressure just like we did with our first style of leaf. So I'm gonna apply pressure, but go for a little bit longer. And then I'm gonna release pressure and instead of lifting off here, I'm just gonna curve and then go right back into pressure and release. Okay, so I'll do it again. Maybe our flower is here. Pressure release, pressure, you can even cross over like that and release. That was a really curvy one, but you get the point. So if you all, all you have to do is just coming up here so you can see, give it a little stem, then apply pressure, gradually release, Curve when it's thin, add pressure again, and release for a thin tip, okay? So you have a bent over leaf where you see just the edge or the side of the leaf here, and then it gets more towards or facing you again with the face of the leaf, the front of the leaf, and then the thin, thin tip right there. So you could add a stem with a tulip on it there. You could 
paint peony leaves like this, etc. There's endless opportunities with this and it really makes it look like you've got a detailed painting on your hands because you've got this nice fold or bend in your leaf and it adds a really fun detail. So our next and final sprig we're gonna do is a silver dollar eucalyptus. It's a really muted and soft color, but I have all vibrant and bold colors in my palette. So a lot of people ask me how I mix up this particular color with the colors I have in my palette. So I'm gonna show you. Um, so I'm gonna rinse off the green I have on my brush. And like I said, I'm type B, so we do have some crazy colors going on in my mixing wells, but that's okay. I'm going to start with phthalo turquoise. So phthalo turquoise, turquoise is going to be our base. It's what it sounds like, it's turquoise. We're gonna put turquoise in this mixing well here, and if you have a color underneath it that's dried, that's fine as long as it's somewhat related. Um, but if you don't have a color underneath it, that's fine also, because what I'm about to show you and how I mix this up is exactly what I'd do if I had a clean palette. So I have phthalo turquoise down. That's a really bright, vibrant turquoise color. I'm gonna add a lot of water to it because the eucalyptus color I'm going for is a really light color. So I'm just gonna add a couple touches of water. And then from here, adding brown. This is the secret ingredient. So just grabbing a little bit of brown, mixing, mixing it in there. And the thing with mixing colors is you have to be a little bit patient at first. If you've never mixed up the color before and you're like, but it looks green, it doesn't look blue or whatever it might be. You just need to keep trial and error. Just keep mixing stuff in and go with your gut. If you're like, I think this color needs more yellow, just try it out. And if it doesn't look like how you thought it would, keep going back to the drawing board and you'll get there. So this is a bit more green than I want it to be, so I'm gonna bring it back to the bluer side by adding a touch of phthalo turquoise. And from here, I like the hue. I'm gonna make it lighter and I want it to be a bit more smoky or muted, so I'm gonna add a touch of black. A bit more. So now it's a really smoky blue-brown uh, blue color, and now all I need is water. So what I can do here is I can add a bunch of water to my mixing well, or I can just grab this color on my brush and make it lighter by flicking my brush in my water cup. So now I have the light hue on my brush instead of in my palette. And if I ever wanted to make this darker, I'd have to keep adding paint to it. So I'm just gonna do it that way. I'm gonna grab the paint from my palette like this and lighten it by going to my water cup. Okay, so just like all the other sprigs, I am going to start with my stem first. So I'm grabbing Burnt Umber and Mars Black. And I am going to do a three leaf sprig of silver dollar eucalyptus. So I'm gonna have this short little guy here, one here, and then a little bit further up. I like brown bleeding into the phthalo turquoise mixture for eucalyptus. So I'm gonna work really quickly, wash my brush off with the brown and grab this color. Again, I want it to be really light, so I'm just grabbing the color and flicking it off my water to make it lighter. And this is still really wet, so it's gonna do a nice bleed into my leaf. So I'm gonna go for this leaf, pointing at the actual stem with my brush, and it's a one stroke leaf. All I'm doing is pointing, pressing, pressing, and looping down. I'm just kind of creating this like teardrop. If there's this big old puddle of water right here, I might just dry off my brush and soak it up. And you see how it's nice and light. And that bleed right there is so cool. I'm gonna grab a touch more water and do the same over here. Point towards the stem, press and curve out, and then loop back down. You can always make it a bigger leaf by doing this little outline if you want to. Maybe for this last leaf, I grab a little bit more hue so it's slightly more colorful and dark. 
and then go, same thing, point towards the stem, press, need a little bit more water, press and loop. And there you have it, a nice, subtle eucalyptus color. We got some stem bleeding into it, which is so fun to look at when you're painting in a loose style of watercolor. And you learned how to do stems, a few different types of leaves. So go ahead and incorporate this in your actual floral compositions, loose style florals, and make sure to check out the video that I have all about floral watercolor and composition using a full wreath and I'm also going to be covering color palette choices and how I go about them in that video so make sure to check it out keep practicing those leaves because they are frustrating at times when you're first starting out and painting in this style so don't get so don't get too discouraged make sure to stick with it smash that like button on this video check out the supplies below if you don't have them and you want to check them out etc and make sure to comment below i love interacting with you guys seeing what you're interested in learning and whatnot so please comment below with if you have any questions on this or if you are wanting to see something from this channel or next tutorial or videos etc love interacting with you like i said and make sure to just keep painting and i hope you loved this tutorial <laughs> <laughs> Classic Ender.